Enchanting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller Pura del Pre. Words by Anika Aldamuy Denise. Illustrations by Paola Escobar. It is 1921. Pura Teresa Belpre leaves her home in San Juan for a visit to Nueva York. Words travel with her. Stories her abuela taught her. Cuentos folcóricos Pura retold in the shade of a tamarind tree in Puerto Rico. Now a new island stretches before her, ripe for planting seeds of the cuentos she carries. Manhattan, a city of hustle and bustle, bigger, louder, crowded, yet alive with hope and possibility. What began as a visit to celebrate her sister's wedding becomes the first steps in a new land. Y una vida nueva for Pura. She works first in a garment factory, but it is cold floors and hard edges, not the soft fertile ground where seeds take root. Then, a golden opportunity, una bendición. The library needs a bilingual assistant. Buddha speaks Spanish, English, and French. She is perfect for the job. But where are her abuela's stories? Not one folktale from Puerto Rico is on the shelves. How lucky for the library that Buddha has story seeds ready to plant and grow! In the children's room, she lights the story hour candle and begins. Her eyes dance, her voice sings. Buddha's words paint a picture of a little house with a round balcony, where Martina, a beautiful Spanish cockroach, meets Perez, a handsome and gallant mouse. El ratoncito Pérez y la cucarachita Martina, a tale from the tamarind tree. When Pura's story is done, each child makes a wish on the candle, and with a wisp of air, whoosh, la vela is blown out. Now Pura has a wish too, to plant her story seeds throughout the land. Buddha learns to make puppets. She nips and sews their clothes, paints their delicate faces. Families come to hear folk tales in Inglés y Español to watch Buddha's puppets dance across the stage of her stories. But the library needs libros for its shelves. How can more children read Perez y Martina and other cuentos de Puerto Rico? Buddha puts her story in an envelope and mails it to Frederick Warren, a publisher. Soon, Perez y Martina is a book. Now, a published author, puppeteer, and storyteller. Buddha travels from branch to branch, classroom to classroom, to churches and community centers, planting her story seeds in the hearts and minds of children new to the island who wish to remember la lengua y los colores of home. Writing, learning, speaking, teaching, traveling, Buddha does not slow down until... Like the beautiful Martina, she meets her Perez. On a December day in New York, Buddha marries the musician Clarence Cameron White. Un año away from the library, she decides, one year to start a new life, as a wife. Chui, 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 chui. But a year stretches on. Together, they travel to new cities. Clarence plays his music, Buddha tells her stories. They are happy years of music and writing, separations and reunions. 
Friends, family, and stories always. Until on a June day in New York, Clarence stops playing his music, and Buddha's story must begin again. It is 1961. Buddha returns to the library. There are others now, storytellers who make puppets dance. Who read Perez y Martina, The Tigre and the Rabbit, Juan Bobo, The Three Magi, and many more of Buddha's stories to the children. The seeds she has planted, the roots that grew shoots into the open air of possibility have become a lush landscape into which she steps as though she has never left.